Hey guys, this is Nerpon from the Underwater Photography Guide and Blue Water Photo. Today I can announce that Nikon has finally gotten through their autofocus rut and we have a full frame prosumer grade mid-range camera, the Nikon Z6 III, uh, that actually has great autofocus and can compete with Canon and Sony. So Nikon is back in the game for underwater photography and let's talk about the Z6 III. Now before I get to my review, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel if you want more content, tutorials, and just smashing that like button really helps us get it out there to the YouTube algorithm so everybody else can see this review as well. Now thank you guys for doing that uh, and let's get started. So the Nikon Z6 III is a fantastic camera. I've been shooting it for the last few days here in sunny California at Catalina Island in Anacapa and this camera is a beast. So. Um, when I say that, it's actually not too big. <laughs> it is smaller than the Nikon Z8, uh, but it is slightly bigger than the Nikon Z6 II. So if you have a Nikon Z6, Nikon Z6 II, or Nikon Z7, it's not gonna fit in those housings. Now, the camera has a 24.5 megapixel sensor, which is the same resolution as the Z6 II and Z6. Uh, however, it's a new partially stacked sensor. Now, what does that mean? It means there's basically two sensors stacked on top of each other, partially, I guess. Uh, and having that there allows for them to process at the same time for faster readout speeds, which allows for higher burst rates when you're taking photos, less rolling shutter, um, and a lot of other benefits as well. So it's just a better, quicker processing camera. Now this camera can also process its autofocus a lot better than the Nikon Z6 II. Um, and the Nikon Z6. And the acquisition rate is awesome. It inherits the, uh, the autofocus system from the Nikon Z8 and the Nikon Z9 to have Nikon's highest pro grade autofocus system on the market. Uh, now, to me, that's a game changer. I have been shooting the Nikon Z6 for the last five years. I did an upgrade to the Nikon Z6 II because I felt the autofocus system was fairly similar to the original Nikon Z6, even with the processing updates that have been made on the camera. Well, with the Z6 III, I am wanting to make that shift. However, probably like a lot of you guys, I've already bought the Nikon Z8. So um, now I have a higher resolution camera. The Nikon Z8 is the flagship camera. It's a better camera than the Z6 III. It has a resolution of 45 megapixels. So if you are looking for that, the Z6 Z8 is a great upgrade. But if you're still a Z6 shooter or even a Nikon D850 shooter, or Nikon D500 shooter, the Z6 III is a much better camera and a great upgrade um, for those of you that are looking for that mid-range, mid-level camera. Now the one downside of the Z6 III and having this partially stacked sensor is the same downside that I found on the Nikon Z8, the Sony A93, and a lot of other cameras. Even though you can shoot um, at higher burst rates and you have a better processor, you actually have reduced dynamic range. So the dynamic range at ISO 100 is only 10.46 stops, which is about a whole stop lower uh, than other um, cameras on the market, including the Nikon Z6. So the Nikon Z6 and the Nikon Z6 II has more dynamic range. Uh, what does that actually mean? Well, dynamic range is your camera's ability to capture details in the highlights and the shadows of the image. Uh, the Z6 III captures slightly less details in that whole range. So if you're shooting, let's say, a sunball, where you want a lot of details in your highlights in the sun and also your shadows, it, you're just gonna have less details. You can still properly expose the image, there's just slightly less details in the image itself. Um, is that a problem? I did notice a difference between my Z6 and, my Z, and the Z6 III here. Uh, when I was shooting sunballs, I made sure to test that out extensively so you guys can see exactly how those photos look. Most people will not care. Um, I'll be honest, most people are not going to notice the difference uh, of that 10 stops versus 11 stops in the Nikon Z6 II. Is it enough for me to not upgrade? Well, personally, no, because the autofocus system is going to allow you to capture a lot more photos uh, and get good autofocus than you'll have with the Z6 II. And to me, that's the most important thing. Autofocus, you can't really fix, although there are, are some AI softwares out there. Uh, but dynamic range, you can edit, you can expose your images properly, and you can. there's plenty of scenes that don't require that really high dynamic range. Uh, really, Sunballs is the place where you're giving a lot of that up. Um, so for me, it's not as much of an issue, but it is an important con that I should mention. Uh, now, the other exciting upgrade for the Nikon Z6 III are the video specs. 
Uh, you can shoot 4K, 60 frames per second, using the full width of the sensor without a crop. What does that mean? That means this is a better camera for video than the Sony a7 IV and the Canon R6 Mark II. So yeah, there you have it. If you're planning on shooting video, you want a prosumer grade camera in the $2,500 price point range, the Nikon Z63 is a better option. And I was shooting 4K 60. I love the clips that I got. Um, it looked fantastic. Uh, and it was really smooth because now the camera has eight stops of in-body image stabilization. So that's even more st stabilization than you've had in previous models and uh, handheld footage was looking really crisp. Um, for those of you that don't know what in-body image stabilization is, it's basically the concept where the sensor of the camera is actually on a gyroscope. And so when you're moving, the sensor is moving along with you um, and you can get more stable footage and shoot at lower shutter speeds. And I did notice the difference from the Z6 II going up to the Z6 III. So that was pretty cool. Uh, another thing that you can do with the Z6 III is shoot in 6K, 30 frames per second. So if you are a macro videographer and you want to crop your video, you can do that too. Uh, now, the crown jewel of the Z6 III is the fact that you can also shoot in RAW um, in the camera uh, when you're filming. So file types include NRAW and ProRes RAW if you are a Mac shooter and you want to use ProRes. Um, and you can also shoot in N-Log as well. So there's a lot of options for color editing and color correction for video. Nikon, uh, actually the president of Nikon told me once that they were really going to shift into the direction of video. and. I see that happening with every camera, and that is awesome. Another thing that I saw happen was Nikon has finally fixed uh, their issues with manual white balance underwater. Um, I was able to do manual white balances down to 60, 70 feet, no problem. It wasn't saying no data acquired or could not acquire data. It was actually doing the white balance. The colors look pretty good, not incredible. I mean, I think Sony and Canon do still have a slight edge on that aspect of video, but pretty good and I was overall really happy with it. So a lot of my video footage that you're seeing now is manual white balance video um, and it did a great job for that. So that is a quick overview of the camera. Uh, overall I had a ton of fun shooting it. Uh, another thing, another feature that I didn't mention was that you can actually do 14 frames per second burst shooting with this camera. If you're shooting with strobes, you know, that's that's more than most strobes can handle, so you're good there. If you're shooting without strobes and you're doing some pelagic photography, trying to get uh, maybe a school of sardines or sharks or, or tuna or something like that, uh, then you can switch to electronic shutter mode and shoot at 20 frames per second. And that's what the partially stacked sensor allows you to do. It allows you to get those fast readout speeds. Canon already does that with the R6 Mark II, so you know, to me that's not like a major upgrade, uh, but that is another aspect of that readout speed. During this whole time, after three dives, I shot about 50% of the battery life. So this camera can last about six dives. I don't know why the battery life is so much better than with the Z6 II and Z6, but it is. Uh, so that's a pretty cool thing. You can last a couple days, but I charge my camera between days of diving. So let's talk about housing options. Uh, we already have two housing options, which came out very quickly. Um, so we have the Ike Light housing option, which is a polycarbonate housing for $18.95. Um, and it's a fantastic housing. Uh, I've been using it um, the whole time I was doing this review. Eichlite has really upgraded the way they do their housings as well. They have these new dials, which are hard plastic and very easy to manipulate and move. So it's really been a pleasure using that, including for the aperture control, which I always had a little bit of difficulty with, with my old Z6. Well, I never had any difficulty with this at all. Uh, you have full control of the housing, except for the joystick tool um, on, the ha on the camera. Uh, and the buttons are nice, easy to press, they're super easy to use, and they're labeled. So if you're underwater, you're not really sure what you're doing, that does help. Now, my favorite thing about this housing is the fact that you've got a back button lever and a front shutter lever, so I just hit the back button when I want to focus and the shutter when I want to shoot, and it does a great job. It's nice and ergonomic, and I also like using the TTL converter, which is unique to Ike Light housings and Ike Light strobes. I'm actually able to um, have the camera control the power of the strobes with the Ike Light TTL converter if you're using Ike Light strobes um, like the DS232s. So make sure you check that out and we can give you some information if you message us at sales at bluewaterphotostore.com. We're happy to help you out there. Now the Ike Light housing is compatible with a wide range of underwater lenses and I want to talk about my favorite underwater lenses for the Nikon Z6 III. 
uh, I was shooting a lot of wide angle photography with this Nikon 8 to 15 millimeter fisheye. Now this is an F mount lens, not a Z mount lens, so you do need a Nikon FTZ adapter to use an F mount lens on the camera. It works great. I don't notice any kind of re reduction in speed for autofocus, uh, so it's a fantastic option and it's my favorite fisheye option on the market, to be honest. Uh, at eight millimeters, you can do a circular fisheye, which is a kind of a cool effect. I didn't do that for this review, but you can do it. Uh, another great wide angle lens is the Nikon Z 14 to 30 millimeter. This is a great rectilinear lens. If you're planning on shooting sharks or dolphins or anything like that, you can get up close and zoom really well. Um, and the image quality is much better from the old F mount 16 to 35 uh, because you do have a shorter flange distance on the mount uh, itself. So you're getting less diffraction and better corners in your image. Uh, now when it comes to macro lenses, my favorite lens for the Nikon Z6 III is the Nikon 105 Z macro. It's uh, pretty fast autofocusing now that the autofocus speed has been upgraded. Before I wasn't really happy with the lens because the autofocus speed was so slow, but what I am happy about is it's like at least 1.5 times sharper than my F mount 105. So I upgraded to the Z mount from the F mount just for the image quality benefits and now that the autofocus system is upgraded, you're left with a fantastic macro setup um, and it's one of my favorite macro setups to shoot underwater. Uh, so I've been happy about that. I had some nice uh, shots of pyrosomes and uh, nudibranchs and a lot of other critters that we were seeing underwater um, in Anacapa and Catalina Island. So, if you want to do some blackwater diving or you want to use a macro to wide angle conversion lens, Nikon does offer a 60 millimeter macro, which is officially discontinued, but I think it's, I would still recommend getting it uh, because it does make blackwater photography easier. And the Kraken KRL 09S macro to wide angle conversion lens actually works with the Nikon 60 millimeter as well. And it gives you 154 degree fisheye field of view. This isn't something you can do with Canon and Sony. So I think it's a pretty cool option to have with the Z6 III. Uh, finally, there are some kit lens options out there. So there's the Nikon Z24-50, uh, which is a great option if let's say you wanted a Nauticam housing and you wanted to shoot with uh, a WACP, a wide angle correction port, um, or an FCP, a fisheye correction port. That is a great combination as well. Um, now, I forgot to mention when it comes to housings, uh, Nauticam has a polycarbonate, I mean, sorry, Nauticam has a, uh, an anodized aluminum housing option out. I ex expect Merilux to also have an anodized aluminum housing option out as well as Aquatica and Isoda down the line. Uh, but right now it's just Eichelite and Nauticam for housing options. Anyway, if you like this review, again, make sure you like and subscribe. If you have any questions at all about the Z6 III, drop them in the comments below or email us at sales at bluewaterphotostore.com. We can get you set up with a whole underwater housing system uh, or if you just wanna upgrade and get a housing and you want some options, make sure you contact us. We'll have the most updated options um, after this video comes out. Now, thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you guys out there diving. Thank you.